Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another layer by layer tutorial. In today's tutorial, I want to show how to create some simple explosion animations of this button. So we're going to learn a little bit more on how to create these animations and how to think about them, how to approach them. So I exported this video out of Fusion 360 and what I want to show you guys is how to, to make this kind of animation. So this is uh, the project that I'm working off of. It is a circuit playground based project. We got a circuit playground inside this button. So what I want to show is how to disassemble this button because uh, there's quite a few pieces to it. So right off the bat, um, this is a multi-component, meaning that it is a component with a bunch of other components inside of it. So we can break this down here. And a real quick way to isolate an object is there's so many parts here and so many layers that I want to just right click and then hit the isolate button. And that'll just isolate this one button. So that's cool. There are some pieces here that I need to reveal, like the cover in the base, but there's essentially uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different pieces to make this button. Quite a bit of pieces, and that's why I want to show people how to disassemble it through CAD as an explosion. So now that I have this um, isolated out, I want to flip over to the animation workspace. So we're in the animation workspace, and I'm going to start off with a new storyboard. By default, you're not going to have these. These are just the ones I created before the tutorial. So I am working off of basically a fresh one. It looks like this. And as I play around here, I realize that the orientation of this button isn't really the right way. So what I did was I had exploding upways. And since I'm exporting this, most things are uh, sort of widescreen. So exploding it outways would be a lot better. So what I'm going to do is before I even want to, I want to do one thing, right? I want to turn off the recording view. And that will allow me to move around here without, um, I actually turned it on on accident. And this is, this always trips me up here. Um, I don't want to record the camera movement. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to turn it off right here. You'll have this red warning that says, uh, red text rather, it says view is not recording, view is not recording. Okay, that's good to know because I don't want to be recording the view. That's something I, I like to save for the very end because I need to be able to here to work with this. Um, work work around here, orbit around your object. So now that I got that, I'm going to start moving this thing. So I want to move the button, and I'm going to hit the M key to move it. And what I want to do is I want to have it facing front, right? So this is the front, so I'm going to go this way, and then rotate so that is facing the front at 90 degrees. And exploding it out this way is going to be a lot better than exploding up ways because I have just more real estate going from the left to right. So now when I orbit around here, um, it has more of a traditional orbit where I can orbit around there like that. So that's how I want to show it. All right, so now I have this rotate here, and that's wrong. I don't want that. I'm going to delete that. I need to orient it when I am at a zero. This red flag here means that I'm not actually writing any keyframes. I'm just at the very, very beginning of the, of the thing. So this is where you want to do all your uh, translations. So I'm going to do this again by going over here, 90 degrees. I think that's facing the right, the front. Yes, it is. I'm looking at my, my view cube here. I want that to face the front. I'll hit OK. And you'll see nothing is here in the animation thing. And that's good, because I, I need to start that way. So now I can advance a little bit. Let's go to a, a, uh, one second and just kind of zoom in here. So I can, because I'm going to be working uh, pretty small. The goal of this animation is to be about three to four seconds. So I can be a, even a little bit closer. So yeah, that's probably pretty good. All right, next thing I'm going to do is now that I'm at one second here with the playhead, I'm just going to start tearing this thing apart. So I'm going to move this thing back just a little bit, and then I'll move this one back a little bit. And you'll notice that as I'm doing this quickly, um, Fusion is recording all of this movement. And maybe I want to push this one back. And then what I'm going to do is just something a little bit fancy. I'm going to select this compression spring, hold down Shift, and then click on the housing, and then move that as a group like that. Hit OK. So that's pretty neat. So I pretty much developed that really quickly. When you're in the move command, you can click to different things and you won't have to append them. You can just click. I'm not holding down shift. I'm just left clicking. Um, so that's cool. You can keep this transformation thing open so, so you can build this really, really quick. So let's go ahead and play this back, see what happens. That's really cool. It looks really nice. However, it doesn't really depict what needs to come first. What do I need to take apart first? And the first thing we want to do is um, take off this dome here. So I'm going to. Uh, move, hold, I'm going to click uh, in individual um, pieces and then hold down command so that I can um, to select the ones that I want to push back over here. All right, I want to push these back and now I have just the cover and the dome popping out and then the rest follow after that. So what should happen next is the base should be moving. So I'll just drag that chunk over so we have 
the cover and the dome, then the backing, and then these kind of separate at the same time. So we got boom, boom, and then break apart. And then one last thing I'll do is I will um, move the compression spring back. So you see how I advanced my playhead to, to over four? I want it to be a little bit over here, so I'm gonna push this back a little bit. And I also, no, I think the cover's pretty good, so let's watch it again. So let's go ahead and play that back. And then the spring comes out like that. Pretty neat. It's not too bad. I think it looks pretty good. I think it conveys the order of which the things need to come out. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. It's actually better than what I thought it was going to be. And of course, we can. One, one of the things I like to do is go to the very end frame. So that's, in this case, the four second mark. And I'll hit the home button and then I'll hide the timeline to see if this kind of looks right. So I kind of want to be like something like that, show a little bit of depth and maybe even zoom in just a tad here, zoom in maybe like that much to fill in the frame because this entire canvas will be exported. Uh, so you want to be centered and the, and, the, and the way to find out if you're centered or not with the screen is to just hit again, just reorient yourself, hit the home key, this home button over here, it'll reset you and then just kind of move slightly around um, like I did just now. So it looks pretty good. Now. I want to create a backwards effect where this like all come collapses back into it, so that when it's a GIF, when I export it as a, a GIF or a GIF or a JIF, a JIF file, um, you can, <laughs> GIF file, you you will you can see it kind of go back and forth. So the way to do that typically is what I would do. I think I found a bug here in Fusion. So what I would normally do is I would uh, double I would duplicate this storyboard. So that's this whole animation set. This whole timeline can be duplicated as a new storyboard. So I'll hit copy, and then I'll paste it. And you can see I have here storyboard number four, copy. So it's the exact same thing, right? But what I want to do is I want to right click, and there's this reverse option. It should theoretically reverse, but when I click it, it accidentally breaks it. So this is, it just kind of breaks the translation. And I think that's because uh, when we did this animation in the beginning, we went to the, the home key here to the home frame, the zero, zero mark, and we orient, reoriented our object. So because that isn't like a captured position, um, I guess there's a bug where you can't reverse it because it doesn't know that you have moved it because the, the, the position wasn't really captured. So you might want to do that uh, inside the model, but I don't want to mess up my model. I just want to manipulate the time. So here's what I'm going to show you how, I, how to kind of do it quickly. So I'm going to go to the end frame here. And then I'm going to say uh, new storyboard. And then I want to change the option to start from the previous. Start from end of previous. So that's going to be, it'll start from this mark here. So now I have this new storyboard that starts off already exploded. So that means all I have to do now is just kind of merge them all together. It's simple enough, right? Well, let's, let's try to play around with it. So I'm going to move um, this cover back over where I think it is supposed to go. We can reorient ourselves to kind of get a better look of it get this ortho faces and I'll go ahead and move this compression spring back I think it needs to be 20 I'll select those move it back and it's starting to it's starting to uh, they, they tend to the, the transitions tra tend to be snapping at, at kind of intervals so I, I'm going to use those intervals uh, to my advantage here I'm gonna push this one back until it kind of clicks into place a little bit. So now I got that, and that's kind of good. They all kind of come forward in this it's in this manner. So let me reorient myself again. You see that looks like that. I'm gonna go look at it from the right, just flat on the right like this. I'm gonna go back to storyboard four, and you can see if I go all the way to the zero mark, you can see where my dome is actually supposed to be. So let's switch back over here. And then switch back over here, and you can see how much of an offset I need to kind of accommodate for. Um, so I'm going to push this back until where I think it's somewhere around here. So let's just do a marquee selection on all of them. We're on the the last keyframe of storyboard number five. M key to move. Let's push it back. And let's say maybe 30. Hit OK. Click away. Storyboard number four. It looks like we still have a little bit more to work with. I don't know. That's maybe 30 or so millimeters. So let's try 30. Again, marquee selection, move tool. Move it back, eh, let's try 15. Storyboard number four, looks like we still got a little bit more to go. Back over to storyboard number five. So you kind of get the workflow. It's definitely hacky, but it's it's the quickest I, I know how to do it. 
um, maybe it's faster to do it in foot in, in Premiere <laughs> maybe it is faster in Premiere I think so but I'm just showing you guys how to kind of quickly move these bigger pieces here so I'm moving it by five millimeter incre increments I'm getting there I'm probably really really close move it one more five and I think we are still not there five come on there we go and we're there yeah we're totally there you see there's no movement now between switching between the two storyboards that's pretty good so now we have our, our, our first thing god this drives me nuts where I can't deselect stuff it drives me nuts so now I can play this let's reorient ourselves so we know where we are go to the end frame uh, I want to go somewhere let's let's home again homey hide this look at it the right and then just kind of just barely tilt it okay play it okay and then we go over here this actually starts over there so remember starts from there and then starts off over here and then just collapses so that's pretty nice I think that's cool so now what we can do is uh, export this out however I might have I might run into a problem here when I hit publish that's the publish button up there I only want to select certain storyboards um, so unfortunately I have to hit all storyboards so let's pretend that I don't have these two storyboards and I export this out as a 1920 by 1080 um, that's pretty much your standard def. I wouldn't even call it high definition anymore, <laughs> just because it's we got 4K now, which is which is HD. Um, so I'm gonna hit uh, cancel on that and just pretend like we're using this MP4 here that it exported it out and it combines those two storyboards together into one movie clip. The movie clip is about five seconds long and it's about two megabytes big. Not too bad. If you want to turn that into a GIF, there's several ways to do it. Here's the way I like to do it. I like to use Photoshop. You don't have to necessarily use Photoshop. There's online tools and stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use the file import video frames to layers, and that's gonna allow me to um, really crunch this file size down. So I'm gonna select the button explode.mp4, and then I get this window. This allows me to set to limit the keyframing. So if we are at five seconds, in each second has 30 frames in it. That's about 150 frames, and that's quite a bit. So I'm gonna slash those in half by using four frames. So we're gonna limit every four frames of this total animation here. You can, you can kind of scrub through it here. You can set in and out points as well. Don't need to do that here, but that's all I need to do is just limit that keyframing to four. And what will happen is now it'll turn those 150 frames into just 31 frames. So what I can do it here is I can do a, a shift select all these frames and change the delay. I'll change this delay just a little bit longer to 0 0.05 of a second. When I play this back, um, Photoshop plays it back not in real time. It's really, really kind of slow and choppy here. It doesn't actually look like that once you export it out. But from here, what I want to do is kind of trim down the frames a little bit. So it looks like that's going to be maybe um, uh, 1600 might be a good option. That looks kind of neat. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So I'm just kind of trimming away um, some of it here. So it looks like that's going to be the max right there. So maybe 1400, yeah, it looks pretty good. So it's more, it's just kind of reducing the space and hopefully reduces the file size as well with, with still keeping a, a decent thing. You can crop it even further, but uh, I don't want to mess with it too much. Now I'm gonna do uh, save for web. So there is a, I think it's export and then save for web. And this has a special utility for making, uh, compression, uh, crushing the, the GIF, the animated GIF. So I'm gonna change the preset up here to GIF 128 dithered. That kind of smooths out a little bit. And then you can look down here, GIF 1.7 megabytes. That's how big it is. It's pretty decent. Um, I can make it even more by um, increasing the lossy, lossly, lossy. Um, I'll, I'll crank this up to 30. I wouldn't go any higher than 30 because then it starts really degrading the image. But that's a pretty good uh, base. So now that turned it into just a megabyte. So that's pretty good. If I turn the transparency off, sometimes it'll increase the file size. In this case, it did. So I'm going to leave that on. For whatever reason, that makes it smaller. And you could even, um, yeah, that's about it I'm, I'm going to do there. So I'm going to leave it at one megabyte. It's pretty good. And then I'll, 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 I'll save this out as a different explode like that. And there you go. I have this nice, smooth. It's a lot smoother here. It plays quicker. Once you shrink it down and, and kind of you know scale it to where it's going to be, it's going to be about that big on a website. Uh, so that looks pretty good. 
um, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, this is just a quick introduction to um, animations, creating animations, thinking about them uh, from a disassembly standpoint. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys in the next one.